I was just about to start this vlog sharing all of my current summer favorites, some related to pregnancy, some not. I was, you know, just sitting down to record this vlog in a bathroom. And then I realized I really wanna go play pickleball, which is one of my summer favorite things to do. So I think I'm gonna go play pickleball and we'll start this vlog tomorrow, bye. Okay, it's the next day. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For everyone who's new here, my name is Lucy. I am 29 years old. I live in New York, although I'm currently at my in-laws house out of the city. And what else do you need to know about me? Probably nothing. Well, the main topic of this video is going to be a lot of my current summer favorites right now. And because I am 24 weeks pregnant when I'm filming this, I am gonna be talking a little bit about pregnancy things, but I will keep it kind of general because I know not everyone out there is pregnant. If you're new to my channel, please click on the red subscribe button that you're seeing down below. That will allow you to join my Think Fam on YouTube and it will make it so anytime a new video goes live and you open your YouTube app, you will see the video there. It also might send you an email, I'm not sure. I would like to apologize for the wind. I am sitting inside of a screened in porch where the wind is blowing so I can hear it and I hope it's not disrupting your viewing experience. And if you're a Fink Fam regular, just give this video a thumbs up to let me know that you are excited to be back and let's dive into the video. So you know, my first summer favorite of the moment has got to be pickleball. That is what I, you know, ditched you yesterday for. So just a little bit of background. When we were in Tennessee, on a family trip recently, they had pickleball courts. I had never played pickleball, but it's kind of like tennis. It's just on a bit of a mini tennis court and the rackets are different and the ball's different and actually it's nothing like tennis. If you're good at tennis, you are not necessarily good at pickleball. It takes getting used to with the shorter racket and the ball is a lot lighter to hit so you can swing a lot harder. Personally, I think it's so fun. I actually think it's a lot more fun than tennis because you don't have to run quite as far and I hate running, but you can just kind of slam it and the ball usually stays in the court because it's kind of like a wiffle ball material. We loved pickleball so much on this trip. Specifically, Michael's parents loved pickleball so much on this trip. So they had their birthday recently and the gift that we all got them was this conversion kit where you can basically convert any tennis court into a pickleball court. So it comes with these little yellow strips that you lay out to sort of denote where the pickleball court lines are. And it comes with a measuring tape so you can make sure you're measuring it to pickleball regulation size. But I think our net has not arrived yet. So we've been using the tennis court net and just kind of shrinking it in size by putting out these markers. So pickleball's a summer fave for sure. My second summer fave is in my hand and it's right here. It is a Vans gluten-free blueberry waffle. And I burned it a little bit on the back. So we're gonna show you this side. I did show you the Vans gluten-free waffles in one of my last videos when I was making breakfast in my apartment. I take them with me everywhere I go, which is why I had them out in the freezer here. If you are gluten-free, you gotta try Vans waffles. And if you like blueberry flavor, you have to try the blueberry flavored one. It's really best with butter and maple syrup, but I'm just having it as kind of like my breakfast dessert right now. So we're gonna go naked. Mmm. Mmm. Which leads me to my next summer favorite, this Takaya water bottle. It's stainless steel. It has this little silicone grippy thing on the bottom. So when you put it down on a surface, it doesn't slide. I think it has the most efficient and useful top of any water bottle I've ever had. It's this little twisty thing and then it pops off, it has a little drinking hole. It doesn't have a super wide mouth. All those wide mouth bottles, I just pour all over myself. So. This little hole is perfect. Potentially the best part about it, which is not the case with a lot of stainless steel water bottles, is that it's dishwasher safe. I actually think this company gave me a discount code if anyone wants 20% off. So I'll put it in the description box. They have a lot of really great water bottles. And I actually wanna say, I shared this on my Instagram recently, but as with most of my partnerships, and it's also the case here, when I give you guys a discount code, you know, and I say, use Lucy20 to get $20 off or 20% off, I'm not usually making money from the use of my code. Most of the time, that's not how my branded partnerships work. And most of the time, I'm just giving you the code as a gift to you. My next summer favorite is coffee. Just kidding, it's my favorite all year. My next summer favorite is actually a workout slash 
stretching routine that I've been following. It's free on YouTube and it is for pregnancy. So here's a pregnancy related one. That being said, you don't have to be pregnant to do this stretch routine. It's a 10 minute stretching routine that is led by a woman named Diana Anthalis. And she actually has a lot of prenatal workout videos. So if anyone is pregnant, there's a lot of free stuff on YouTube. Utilize YouTube, you guys. For anyone who's not pregnant too, if you're trying to find good workouts, type stuff into YouTube before you start buying programs and signing up for memberships. YouTube has it all. This is the one I'm loving. You're gonna have to ignore the dirtiness of my screen. It says Pregnancy Unleashed, the prenatal series. And the video, I'll put the link in the description box, but it's called Prenatal Series, Best Stretches for Pregnancy to Relieve Aches and Pains. And I'm actually experiencing those aches and pains that she's referencing. So I'm gonna do that right now, actually. And then we will move on to another favorite. Interjection. I spoke about this on my Instagram, but I have been noticing that I'm experiencing some pregnancy melasma, which I believe the definition of that is like the darkening of the skin pigmentation. And it can happen anywhere. You know, I've heard of people who have melasma around their eyes. For me, it's happening like around my upper lip, kind of like the mustache area. It's a little bit deceiving because it kind of looks like it's hair. So I'm tempted to go get a lip wax or to use that like stick razor, which I use all the time. So I know it's not hair. I just did the stick razor yesterday and I can still see the darkening. I posted on my Instagram just asking if anyone else has had pregnancy melasma and a few people recommended that I use lemon juice, you know, just like to lighten the skin. They say that lemon juice is a natural skin lightener. But then I posted about it being like, oh, a few people told me to do this, you know, how do I do it? And then I got a flood of messages being like, don't do it, it's gonna burn you, it's a chemical burn. Don't go in the sun, it will actually make your skin darker. Don't use lemon juice. So. I think the lemon juice is out. If anyone has recommendations of a specific type of pregnancy safe cream that I could maybe ask my dermatologist about, I'm open to things, but I'm also open to just like letting it be because you know, the body does what it needs to do. And I don't know the point of melasma, but like with my stance on stretch marks, if I'm gonna get a stretch mark, I'm gonna get a stretch mark. If I'm gonna get melasma, I'm gonna get melasma. And I'm really trying to embrace every stage of this process and just let my body do whatever it is it needs to do. So right now we're just living with it. But if you are watching this video and you're noticing it, I wanted to call out what it actually is because it has a name. And if you do experience it as well, just know you're not alone. My next summer favorite has got to be this outfit. Let me show it to you. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Ah. That shit, I'm not going. It's a really comfy matching set from Michael Stars. And the pants are these elastic waistband. Oh yeah, anything elastic right now, I'm all about it. And I'm loving it. Okay, I wanna take you upstairs because my next few favorite summer items are up there, so let's go. Look who I found. Hello. Hi, this is my summer favorite boy. Summer favorite, as opposed to different seasons? Well, I'm making a video about my summer favorites. So Great. this is my favorite boy of the summer and my life. I love you. My next summer favorites are going to be more pregnancy related because that's just what's happening in my life. So the first one is right behind me on the bed and it's the pregnancy pillow. Here's the pregnancy pillow. I featured it in one of my other videos back in the city when I was giving you a look at my apartment, but this is the one I purchased. I'll put the Amazon link for it down below. It's really comfortable. I like this soft material. I don't like super firm things. So this little gap right here is meant for your arm to come out so that you're not, you know, sleeping with your arm raised up. I'll actually get in it and show you how to use it. Okay, so pretend I'm under the covers here. This is how I would normally sleep on the pregnancy pillow. They tell you to sleep on your left side when you're pregnant. I sandwich this pillow between my knees on the left side. I make sure the back of the pillow is supporting right up against my back. And then I lie down with my arm over this thing, just like this. And in theory, it's comfortable but I have been having intense 
back pain, which I can't say is related to the weight on my stomach. Like if you look at my bump right now, I just don't think it's big enough to be causing me intense back pain. It's not like it's pulling me forward. I have gained like 15 to 20 pounds already, so it's possible that it is due to the weight. But even still, my back is in a lot of pain and I've been trying to figure out if my sleeping position is an issue. And I just watched another free YouTube video about sleeping during pregnancy. I learned that the best way to sleep during pregnancy, so you need the pillow for your head, so we'll put this here. Then you're supposed to have a pillow that supports your rib cage and your belly. That is something that the pregnancy pillow is missing. And I have to say, I've noticed my belly doesn't have any support. Even though my belly's small, I am at the stage where when I lie down, it like slopes down to the side and I feel the need to have something under it kind of propping it up and supporting it. I think the pillow in the middle is supposed to keep your spine straight. So they recommend the head pillow, then they recommend the rib cage pillow, then they recommend the knee pillow, which actually should be two pillows if you can because what they said is that when your knee is sandwiching the pillow, your knee and your hip should be in line. Seems like one pillow is enough here. And then the last pillow, which is something that I, I don't do with that, is meant for folding and holding. So they say to fold it and hold it here. But theoretically, this is how I should be sleeping. The reason that you fold this and hold it is so that it keeps your shoulder up and in line like this, instead of without this, you know, my shoulder might go like this or like this. This would be the best, most comfortable way for me to sleep. Honestly, I think it's a lot of pillows. I am totally, in this case, stealing all of Michael's pillows. So I will have to find some more pillows if I do decide to sleep that way. But I just am kind of down to try anything at this point. I feel like all I want to do is sleep on my back. I miss the days. I was a back sleeper through and through. I used to lie on my back comfortably in a straight position. My spine was straight. Anyway, that was my bed demonstration. You also may be noticing this beautiful painting next to my side of the bed and wondering, what is this work of art? Who made this? And the answer is, I did. So in Tennessee, I took an acrylic painting class. There was actually a day when Michael's family decided to do this like arbor adventure activity, which is basically like a ropes course. And if you're pregnant, they do not recommend you do it. You know, you can't really put a harness on pregnant. So I sat that one out and instead I took an acrylic painting class by myself. I actually did film some clips of the process of me painting it and it actually shows the vista that I was looking at when I painted it. So I'll, I'll share those with you here. But this is a final piece. I'm pretty proud of it. I pretty much by the end was not using the paintbrush at all. I was using the palette knife and I was kind of channeling my mom. If you followed my channel for a while, you know that my mom is a painter. We also opened an Etsy shop for her, which I will link below. I think there are a couple pieces currently available. And I just watch her paint all the time. And I was really inspired by her palette knife skills. So this was pretty much a full palette knife piece. We have to find a spot for it, but right now it just lives next to the bed and I get to look at it every morning. Let's go to the bathroom and see what favorites we've got in there. All right, two summer sunscreens that I wanna show you that are my current favorites. First is this Juice Beauty SPF 30. This is oil-free. It's also a moisturizer. And this is the sunscreen that you probably saw in one of my last videos that I use on my face every single morning, just as part of my skincare routine. So even if I don't plan on going outside at all, even if it's a cloudy day like it is today, I put this on in the morning. And a couple things I love about it, it's pregnancy safe. And although it is a mineral sunscreen, meaning it has you know zinc oxide and no other chemical sunscreens, it doesn't make your skin super, super white. And then I follow it up with a moisturizer. And by the time I go downstairs, my skin is not looking like a ghost. The second sunscreen is outside, so I'll have to take you down there to show you, but it's from Hello Bello, and it's another mineral sunscreen, so let's go downstairs. Hi again. Hi. <laughs> Just walking across the grass. Another summer favorite, grounding. All right, I got the sunscreen bin, and I discovered 
And there's actually two that are summer favorites. First is the Hello Bello I was talking about, another SPF 30. This one's a spray. I'm sure you've been seeing all that's been going on with the recalls of sunscreens that have certain chemicals in them. I actually wasn't using any of those chemicals during this time anyway because of pregnancy, but my dermatologist, once I told them that I was pregnant, they suggested that I stop using any sunscreen that has octinacy or oxybenzone and they suggested that i just stick to mineral sunscreens where the primary ingredient is zinc oxide so the active ingredient in this one is just zinc oxide there's nothing else i will say that as with most sunscreens where it's just a mineral sunscreen and it's primarily zinc it does make your skin a little bit whiter than normal, like whiter than if you're using like banana boat sunscreen that goes on clear, obviously. That being said, it's the trade off between having mineral sunscreen and using chemical sunscreen. If you prefer mineral creams, this Australian Gold Botanical SPF 30 is amazing. It's also 100% mineral. Comes out looking pretty white, but if I show you my arm, it rubs in nicely and it has a really nice feel to it. It's super lightweight. I can show you this one just as an example. That was maybe a lot to put in one spot, but it does take a little bit more rubbing, but we're almost there. And after all is said and done, it doesn't look too white. And now my forearms are protected. My next summer favorite is another outfit and it's technically a maternity outfit. So it's a jumpsuit from a company called Hatch, which is a very well-known maternity brand. Hatch clothing is worn by people who are not pregnant. So even if you're not pregnant, you might like this jumpsuit maybe for Thanksgiving or if you're going to a buffet or if you just want a lot of room in your pants. I think the jumpsuit speaks for itself. And I made a TikTok video where I shared the jumpsuit that got almost 400,000 views. So I'm just gonna show you the video and let you see. So I'm currently 23 weeks pregnant. My bump is growing, but it's not too big just yet. I can still wear a lot of my older clothes that I used to wear. Um, not all of them, but some. And this jumpsuit is from Hatch, which is a maternity line, and it's meant to be perfect for people who are pregnant, who have a growing belly, and who are gonna need you know, outfits to expand as they expand. So I just wanna show you somewhat of a flying squirrel look. Do you like? Okay, I'm in the kitchen for a moment so I can share a few of my gluten-free summer favorites. A lot of people have asked me for a video dedicated to the gluten-free life and you know, all my favorite gluten-free favorite brands. I'm just gonna show you, I think, three of my summer favorites that I've been going to over and over again and they're all in the freezer. Number one. Cauliflower pizza. This crust is not only gluten-free, it's also dairy-free. It has one gram of sugar. The crust is really thin, but I like that it has this texture on it. it makes it feel like real pizza. Next, gluten-free bread. I've got a few different types here, but they're all the same brand. So people ask me on Instagram all the time when they see my you know, gluten-free avocado toast or my gluten-free Everything Bagels, what brand is it? It's usually Canyon Bakehouse. This is their hamburger buns. So if you were having a cookout, you could use this. This is their seven grain bread and this is their whole grain bread. They also do have bagels. Found the bagel, Everything Bagels. And my third gluten-free favorite was actually in the fridge. It is this gluten-free wrap from Chufayan. I don't know how to say that. I personally like this one the most. I find that they're the softest and the most pliable. I use this for lunch a lot. I've been making a lot of plant-based wraps for lunch. So I'll do like, you know, avocado and hummus as the base. And then I'll add a lot of lettuce and tomato and olives in it. And then I also use these a lot for quesadillas. So I'll just put like a lot of cheese in there with jalapenos and it's really good. And as long as we're doing a gluten-free roundup, <laughs> couldn't forget these. I tried these the day that they were released and I was pleasantly surprised. I am obsessed with Oreos to begin with and I love that the gluten-free ones say gluten-free on them. My mother-in-law ordered these online. I'll try to find the link and put it below. But these are gluten-free. They are sea-salted caramels. 
surrounded by dark chocolate, non-GMO, made in Maine, gluten-free, women-owned. It says dairy. I don't know if that means dairy-free or dairy-full, but they are so delicious. This is exactly what they look like on the inside. It's like dark chocolate with some chunky sea salt on the top and caramel on the inside. And this is just heavenly after lunch or dinner or breakfast. Okay, it's probably dairy full because it says contains milk, but would highly recommend these. And I think they come in other flavors too. And I think that's it for the kitchen. Okay, so I posted on my Instagram recently and I asked you guys if you have any questions for a Q and A and I told you I would answer them in a future YouTube video. So I'm gonna do that right now. I have your questions pulled up on my laptop right here. I'm sitting outside. It's a bit windy. I anticipate you might hear the wind. You know what? This is a summer video. This is summer wind. We're just gonna go with it. I hope you can hear me. First question, any name ideas yet for the baby? Yes. We have a first name picked out already. And even my twin sister doesn't know the name. We are not telling anyone in our families. Actually, there's only one human being in the world besides me and Michael who knows the name. And it is this woman who works for this embroidery company because she created a baby onesie for him and it has his name embroidered on it. So we had to give his name to her, but she is the only person in the world besides me and Michael that knows and we don't plan on telling anyone else his name until he's born. All right, the next question is, how do you see your career evolving now that you'll be a mom? And this is a great question. This is something I have thought about a lot because you know any content creator that I know of, whether they're an Instagrammer, a YouTuber, a blogger, I tend to find that when they have a child, their platform becomes very much like a mommy blog and all of their content turns into content about the kid and their new life as a mom. That being said, it's just really important to me that I keep up my own identity and my own life as a person, not just a mom. You know, I don't want my Instagram feed or my YouTube channel to become like my child's feed or my child's channel. But because I will be a mom and because motherhood is going to be what's absorbing me, I do anticipate that a lot of my content will shift to be about motherhood and to be about that change. I also do sort of think that like from your guys' perspective, that is what you're gonna wanna see from me. I feel like you guys are gonna want to see what's actually happening in my life. I don't think you're gonna want me to like pretend that I'm not a mom and just pretend that my life is going on like normal. I don't have a plan. When the baby comes, I'm gonna see how I feel. If what I wanna talk about on my YouTube channel and my Instagram account is motherhood, then that's what I'll talk about. But if I feel like that's not at the forefront of my mind, then that's not what I'll talk about. This next question I got a couple of times when we moved into our new apartment and it was, why didn't you buy an apartment instead of renting this time around? Michael and I know that we want to actually leave the city within the next couple of years and move to a quieter, you know, suburban neighborhood outside of the city. Also this apartment that we loved, that we moved into, is already owned by a family and it was not for sale to buy. It was just available to rent. And I think I mentioned this in my apartment video recently, but the apartment that we're renting right now is a two year max lease. So we can only stay here for two years. All right, there are a lot of questions on here about my conception journey. How many months did it take before you started trying to conceive? Questions about like what I did, you know, what vitamins and supplements I took, all that. And I actually have a video coming out in a week or two that tells the whole story of our conception journey from the moment that we decided we were ready to start trying until we got pregnant. So I'm gonna save all of those questions for that video. Next question, how do you make your mesmerizing iced coffee? It's all in the almond milk. So you could pretty much use any coffee. Really what makes my coffee swirls so beautiful and aesthetically pleasing is the almond milk. You have to find creamy almond milk. So my favorite almond milk is either homemade where I can make it with like a lot of almonds and a little bit of liquid so that it's super thick or Calafia Farms. Their unsweetened almond milk I find is the thickest of the thick as far as store-bought almond milks go, and it kind of just like sits on the top of your iced coffee, makes for a beautiful coffee pour in the morning. Every single time I have an entire highlight on my Instagram sharing all my coffee pours, you've got to go check it out. Next question, what are you currently watching? Okay, I've got a bunch of stuff that is on our slate right now. My current favorite is Ted Lasso. It took me a little bit of time to agree to watch this show with Michael because I thought it was going to be a lot more about soccer 
and I do love soccer like I actually played soccer growing up but I totally was like not interested in watching a show about a sport Michael watches enough sports as it is that I didn't need to watch a Netflix show about it but it is hilarious and we're currently at the start of season two and it is really funny would highly recommend Ted Lasso also we watched I think it was last year we watched modern love and they just came out with a new season. This is one of those shows, sorry, I'm moving so much because my back is killing me. Oh, I have to shift, hold on. Oh, this is one of those shows where every single episode of the season is a different cast and it's a different storyline. It's not like a story that carries through the season. It is really sad. The first episode made me sob my eyes out. I'm not gonna give it away to you, but I love this show. Okay, the next question is, do you have any tattoos? No. My dad and my brother have tattoos and a lot of people in my life have tattoos. It's just not something I ever really, really wanted to get. Thoughts on your Van Cleef necklace? Gift or did you purchase? This is the necklace that she's talking about. A lot of people ask me about this necklace. This was a college graduation gift and I wear it pretty much every single day. I wear it in the shower, I wear it in the pool, I wear it in the ocean, I wear it to sleep, I never take it off. It is really special to me and actually you should follow me on Instagram because I am doing a partnership with a company where you can borrow, it's like a borrow slash rental service for jewelry and like designer stuff and you can actually borrow this without buying it. So if you're interested, keep an eye on my Instagram. Next question, is this what you wanted to be when you were growing up? Well, when I was growing up, this wasn't a job. I wanted to be a doctor and I also did want to work in media. Like I did want to be on TV. I wanted to be like a host or a presenter on a TV show, but I wouldn't have ever said that I wanted to be an influencer because this wasn't a job when I was growing up. I truly love it. I love making videos for you guys. I love telling stories. I love shooting. I love editing. All right, last question before we wrap it up. Do you and Michael own a car? And the answer is right now, no. Good news is we are getting our own car as a family. And by a family, I mean me and Michael and our baby. We are getting our own car in the next couple of months. But I think we are gonna go with the Mazda CX-5. So we're getting one so that we can have our own car in the city that we could put a built-in car seat in. So we're getting a car. Yay! Yay! And I think we're gonna lease it. I will keep you posted on our car journey down the line. Okay, that's it. My back hurts. Time to go inside. Thank you for watching my summer favorites of 2021 and for watching my q and I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and drop a comment down below to let me know that you liked it. As always, hit the subscribe button to join my YouTube family and I will see you next time right here on my YouTube channel. Love you all. Bye.